Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation on an automated decoding uh, solution to Siri Bhuvalai. Uh, I'll demonstrate my solution on the first chakra of Siri Bhuvalai. Uh, this is what the first chakra looks like. Uh, as you might recognize, it's a 27 by 27 grid uh, containing entire, uh, only numerals. Uh, and these numbers range from 1 to 64. Now to read our chakra, we require a bond. Uh, the bands that we're going to use is the chakra band. The chakra band is one of the most common bands. Uh, in fact, the entirety of the first uh, chapter of uh, Siri Bhulai can be read using the chakra band. Um, this is what the chakra band looks like. And remember, a band is just the order in which uh, chakra is to be read. Um, so the formulation of the chakra band is really quite simple. We start from the middle of the first row and then move around diagonally whilst wrapping around its edges. Uh, quite simple. So upon applying the chakra band to our chakra, we receive a sequence of numa a sequence of numbers. That's as seen right here. Now this sequence of numbers contains uh, this sequence contains numbers between 1 and 64. Uh, these numbers between 1 and 64 uh, represent phonetic sounds. Uh, as such, they can be represented in any phonetic script like uh, uh, Devanagari, uh, the Kannada script, Tamil script, and so forth. Um, let's start with its representation in Devanagari. Um, so each of our numbers has been uh, has been replaced with uh, letters uh, letters of Devanagari. This is all uh, using a simple one-to-one -one substitution table. Uh, for example. 1 has been replaced with a, uh, 58 has been replaced with sure. Now, what we can also do is represent uh, this sequence of numbers in, as I mentioned, any phonetic script would work. Uh, so let's try it in Kannada. And there's a specific reason for this. Uh, the reason is that it is known that uh, when the first chakra of Siri Bhola is decoded using the chakra band, um, the sequence of characters that is the sequence of numbers that is yielded, uh, this final shloka that is yielded will be in Kannada. That's why we're choosing the Kannada script. Uh, for just for our convenience, it's uh, as I mentioned, it's equivalent to the Devanagari script or any script for that matter. Uh, the same number always represents the same sound. That's key. Now, okay, that's great. We have a s sequence of Kannada alphabets. Uh, our next step would be to go from these characters to words, which would form our shloka. Uh, how, would we, how would we do that? Uh, the implementation uh, is quite technical, but I'll give a broad overview. Uh, essentially, what we do is take sequences of these uh, Kannada alphabets and match them against our dictionary. If they're large enough and if we feel confident enough that uh, on this match, we seed them into our shloka, and we do that until we are, until we do that until the end to get our final shlokas in Kannada, just like this. And that's all. We've gone from a chakra to a shloka. Uh, cleaned up. This was the chakra, uh, the shlokas. Uh, decoded from the first chakra of Siri Bhuvale looks like. Um, now, that's great, but there are a few apparent limitations. One of them is accuracy, obviously. Uh, as you might see, uh, there are many uh, one letter and two letter words that can be seen here. And if compared against the manually decoded shlokas, uh, it would prove that our decoded shlokas are quite erroneous. Uh, now, what we can do to uh, resolve this in the future is one, rely on partial matching instead of strict matching. What that means is we, for example, can use edit distance for this fact. And if the edit distance between our sequence of Kannada characters and the character uh, and a word in our dictionary is below a threshold, and even if they don't exactly match, we accept that sequence of characters as a word and seat it into our shloka. And the second thing that we can do is it's really quite intuitive. For example, certain words 
uh, certain words, especially spelled with L, uh, can be spelled with L as well. Now, this so these words seem to have multiple variations. So what we can do is for these ambiguous uh, sounds or letters, uh, use add all of their permutations, all of their variations into our dictionary to create a sort of fuzzy dictionary. Uh, what this will do is increase the number of matches and thus increasing our accuracy. Now, our second problem, though not as much of a big deal, is our efficiency. Uh, the entire program uh, took not too long to run, but just this, uh, uh, just this part of segmenting words took about 30 seconds to run. It's not very bad, but uh, as this, uh, as our input scales, as we use, as we uh, feed larger and larger uh, uh, sets of chakras into our program, um, it wouldn't scale. Uh, it wouldn't scale well. Now, there are a couple solutions. The most obvious one would be using a more a more efficient uh, data structure to store uh, our dictionaries. Um, this data structure uh, would be optimized for searching and would thus uh, yield faster results. In the future, we can also look at incorporating uh, statistical data. Uh, what that means is, uh, for example, if we know that certain words follow a specific word, uh, we would first search for those words and stuff like that. Uh, in so essentially using natural language processing to uh, help us decode uh, Siri Bhola. Uh, that's all. As you can see, um, the automated solution for, uh, gives us quite promising results and uh, I truly believe this is uh, the future for decoding Siri Bhola. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, thank you to uh, Anupam ji for this opportunity and uh, thank you Anil ji for um, all the resources you provided and I'd like to especially th uh, thank Acharya Ajay Sagar Suriji for all of his guidance throughout this process. Thank you.